Welcome to another episode of Living Your Sparked Second Half. And today we'll talk about three types of people as it relates to dreams. One is very sparked and probably is not even listening to this episode because they're so busy living their sparked second half. Uh, then there's two others. And if you are see yourself in one of these types, then please pay attention. I was one of these types. I have a guest uh, who's coming on the ep episode or on the podcast. This Friday's episode is Mary uh, Carol Moore. And when we were talking, this came up. And so I thought I'm going to do a solo episode and just talk about these three types, particularly the two that are more dream challenged, we'll call them, and not sparked. The dream delayer and the non-dreamer, dream delayer and non-dreamer. And then there's the dream doer. The dream doer is the person who is focused on dreaming, knows how to dream and knows how to make her dreams happen. The non-dreamer and the dream delayer, I talk about most in this episode because those are the people that need a little bit of a wake up call <laughs> in terms of making their dreams happen. Number one, dreaming, period, because the non-dreamer isn't dreaming. And that was me. I was a non-dreamer. Or the dream delayer, like my guest, Mary Carol Moore, who had a dream, had an inkling, actually maybe more than an inkling, but, delay, but just poo-pooed it, pushed it away and didn't not pursue it till late in life. And a lot of my podcast guests are fall into that category who are now pursuing something. And so uh, you could probably call me a dream delay or two, but I would consider if you're talking about like people who start out, people who start out their journey, this is what I want you to think about. When you're younger, you either follow your dreams as a dream doer or you delay your dreams. You know you have dreams and you delay them or you don't dream. And so I'm not talking about when you get to midlife. And I was the non-dreamer. The non-dreamer did not know how to dream. I coincidentally had a couple of dreams that I didn't realize were dreams that came to fruition. Looking back, I now realize, oh my gosh, those were dreams. Never dreams that I was consciously aware of, never dreams that I wrote down. And so what I'm encouraging you to do through this episode is to start to be aware of what type you are, how that's showing up in your life and serving you or not serving you. And by the end of this episode, make a priority out of no longer delaying your dreams. And if you don't dream like I didn't, start to learn how. So that's my goal here for doing this episode is a little bit of a wake up call for you non-dreamers and you dream delayers. So listen in and I hope you learned something from this. I thought this topic about dreaming was an important one. And I know that there's different people and different types of dreamers. And what I'll also call a non-dreamer. So I wanted to talk about those types of people and particularly talk about the people who don't dream or delay their dreams. So let me just cover the three types first. And I talk to these people on my podcast. A lot of my guests are who I find are finding new purpose later in life. They make some kind of pivot. They're often dream delayers. And so they either don't even realize a dream until they start to pursue something. They find something along the way and it's, oh my gosh, you know, this, this it's, so it's a new dream that's been cultivated when they've allowed themselves to dream, but that maybe they didn't dream at all until they started searching for something at midlife, which we often do. That was me. I didn't, I wouldn't consider myself a dreamer. I would consider myself a non-dreamer because I was too busy doing the workaholic thing, never had any time to even think about what my dreams were. And I just think I thought, I, I, I don't even think I gave it any thought. 
So I'm not even going to give it any, any, I'm not even going to try to guess what I thought because I literally didn't think. I didn't have time because I was too busy to think. And so it wasn't like I didn't think I was capable of dreams because I didn't even think about it. And so that was me. And I, but I do think that is a lot of people and I'm not alone in that. And then there's the dream delayers who they're the ones who I often talk to who had an idea of a dream, an inkling of a dream, or even a clear idea of a dream. And then they delayed it because their parents wanted something different for them in terms of a career. And they're trying to make their parents proud. Often that happens or they fell into something and then they were making good money at it. So that was me, even though I wasn't dreaming. So I wasn't dreamed a layer, but that I did fall into something and it paid me well and I just stayed there. And so that's the other type of person that I see as it relates to dreams is these dreams of layers. And then there's the dreamers, the dream doers, I call them. So the dream doers are people who they just go after it. And they're typically very sparked. They're living a sparked life. And they often will find out early. I mean, the, the dream doers, the dream delayers become dream doers, right? Ultimately, you hope. Now, there are dream delayers that one day, someday, and it never happens. And the saddest thing is that they then die with their dream, never having pursued it. So the dream doers are the, there are some who have delayed, but then do, but then they're the people who knew what their dream was young and pursued it. They pushed through whatever fear it was that, oh, it's too big of a dream, or I'm scared because I don't know how I'm going to make money with my dream or whatever circumstance it was. They still pursued their dream and made it happen. And they have been living off their dream in this beautiful sparked place. So we're not going to talk about them so much because they're really happy. And if that's, you probably aren't even listening to this podcast because you're so busy living your dream. But the dream delayers and the non-dreamers I want to particularly talk to and the non-dreamers, because I really want you to know if you're a non-dreamer that it's okay to dream. It's okay to want something more than what you have. I think often we feel guilty for wanting something more than we have. And we think that's okay. I'm okay. It's let other people have big dreams. And then we end up playing kind of small and poo-pooing the things that could make us happier. Why not be happier? If you had bigger dreams, don't you think you'd be happier? Maybe. And think if you have bigger dreams, how that could inspire other people, how it could inspire the people around you, how it could inspire your children and your grandchildren. Don't you want bigger dreams for them? I would think that by pursuing your bigger dreams, that would be a great model for your immediate family. And you could leave a legacy of go after your dreams. And if you don't have any, Show them how to dream. And if you don't know how, learn how. And what I would just say is create the space, carve out the space to just sit with your thoughts and start to think about if I had no limitations, if I had a genie in a bottle, I dream a genie, and you, you, she, or what was the other one? The bewitched, where she could wiggle her nose and you could create whatever you wanted in your life. What would that be? So, and dreams don't have to be these humongous dreams. Oh my gosh, I want to be, have a, a, a TV show or something. Like, or I want to be really famous in terms of this, TED Talk that has 50 million views. Those are like, fine, if you want that dream, that's, but that's what I would say. That's a big dream. Or I want to interview Mel Robbins on my podcast. And now that's a big dream, right? I would, that could be one of my dreams, maybe. I would love that. In fact, I might write it down because I love her so much. And that would be really cool to interview her. But your dreams can be like, 
don't label your dreams. And a, a dream can be as easy or simple as a, it's just not what I have right now. A dream is something that you wish for that isn't in your current reality. So what is not in your current reality that you would like to have? It could be a better relationship with someone that maybe you're estranged from. You know, it could be having a Christmas at a restaurant with the whole family and treating everybody to that. I mean, these, we don't put all this weight on the size of your dream. Just know that a dream is something that you desire to have that you don't currently have. And what happens is we are so busy living our busy lives and being inundated with all the things, the noise that hits us every which way, as soon as we wake up in the morning, and sometimes before we even get out of bed, and we're already picking our phone up and getting messages, it's hard to not pick up my phone in the morning. I have tried to, people say, I don't pick up my phone till 10 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, my, my phone sits at my bed table and it's not long after I get up when I look at it. And so we're constantly being barraged with information, email, phone calls, messages, all the things, TV, scrolling on social media, ads everywhere. And we just live in this constant information world. And we're not creating our own information in our minds. We are not creating our wish list in our minds. We're creating our to-do lists, but we're not creating our wish lists. And that's what I want you to do. So maybe saying dreams is too big of a word for some people, and that's why they shy away. Is that why we shy away from it? Is because that word is just so big and it's uncomfortable for us? So let's say it's your wish list. And you can call it a bucket list because we're at that age where bucket lists make sense. We should all have our bucket list, right? But we need to have these dreams to manifest. We need to have these wishes to let the universe know what would make us happier. What would spark us in life more? And I'm not diminishing or trying to diminish your life in that you're not happy. It's just that it wouldn't it be nice to have these things. Wouldn't it be fun? And wouldn't it be great to show other people that, hey, this is something that I put on my wish list and it came true as proof that it's possible? Just that would be fun. So it, it's almost like a kind of a, have a, a game. Remember that game of life when you would put the little people in the car and you'd keep going on your little journey? So it's like that. It's like an evolution to greater ways to find joy, greater paths to more joyful experiences. So it's not like... We can, we can continue to be happy. So maybe being happier isn't quite what I'm trying to convey, but it's continuing to have these joy, joyful experiences, new experiences, so we don't get stagnant. So our life doesn't become just every day, same day. And dreaming is that roadmap for the joyful path, if you will. So dreaming is something consciously that you can do. Just carve out time to sit down and start to make a wish list. 
with no constraints. What if anything was possible and you could do this? And what would that be? Go to a Taylor Swift concert, maybe for some people, or take my granddaughter to a Taylor Swift concert. I know that my daughter would love that, but she'd want to be included as well. So yes. And so what are what is that fun wish list? And if you're not dreaming at night, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and dreaming at night, if you're not dreaming, and that, that's one of the things I was thinking about when I was thinking about this episode is I know some people uh, tell me they don't dream at night. And one of the issues with that is, or, or they're not remembering their dreams. So there's two things that could be happening. Number one, you're not getting into the deep sleep with where the brain waves get into that. I don't know what it's called, REM or rapid eye movement thing where you, you we have to, in order to get good rest, we have to get into this deep sleep mode. And people who have insomnia and wake up a lot during the night will probably not be getting into that deep sleep enough to dream. And so if that is you, I would seek some doctor's advice to see how you can solve your sleep problems. I know hormones and you know menopause can wreak havoc on our systems. I had horrible hot flashes most of my 50s. And so would wake up in a sweat and a lot of problems sleeping then. I sleep like a baby now, so it's not a problem. But I do dream a lot because I do get into that deep sleep. The second thing might be that you are dreaming and you're waking up and interrupting that dream and then going back to sleep and forgetting it. So that's another possibility. So my recommendation there would be make sure that you have something by your bedside. So when you do wake up, that's your kind of instinct is, okay, let me jot this down. Let me record it. it. It's quite possible that you're so kind of in this state of you're not quite awake and the dream's there for for an instant and then you go back to sleep. But if you start to be aware that this might be happening, subconsciously, you'll realize and you'll actually take this is really crazy. This happens, but it's true. Just the awareness can cause your brain to react differently. So when you're having a dream, now with the awareness, your mind is going to actually get you to realize I'm having a dream. I need to write it down. That could potentially happen. Is that, or that might be happening. And that could happen if you're, if you have this awareness you might be dreaming and you could wake up and then you have your dream written down. Then you know what it was. But dreams at night for me are more like guidance or messages from beyond and not so much your wish list. I guess it's possible that a, a wish for your wish list could come up in your dream at night. I know that my husband, who I rekindled with after breaking up with him, we rekindled 27 years later, he would show up in my dreams at night. And so he could have been on my wish list if I had one, if I dreamed back then. I didn't dream, but he was one of my dreams. I didn't write down anything that I wanted, but I knew deep down inside. And if I had sat down and said, if I had a vision board, he probably would have been on it in really small letters so nobody could have seen it <laughs> because that was a hidden dream I had that I wouldn't have admitted to anybody. But it is what it is. And so, so I, and that's probably another reason why I suppressed my dreams because I wanted something so big that I thought it was impossible. That's impossible. I'm married to somebody else. That's not a possibility. So, why would I ever have that as a dream? You know, we think our dreams are impossible. And again, we, we put constraints on them and nothing's impossible. So write it down. And so dreams are important. And if you never dream, carve out time to create a wish list. Start it maybe just for fun make it a bucket list. 
find a friend, say, I'm going to create a bucket bucket list, you create a bucket list, and then let's compare. And you can get ideas from other people too, because our dreams are, can be anything. It can be anything, but what they have to be is something that ultimately we desire. And we can, if somebody has a dream that interests us, that could be our dream too. And it's always going to, in terms of how it enters our reality, is always going to be cultivated to our and customized for us in our life. And so ultimately it can be along the same themes, but how it rolls out, unless your friend who you are sharing these dreams with, if it's something that you do together, and then that could be a shared dream, a shared item that comes into the reality together, going on a trip together. So that is what I wanted to share with you is just the importance. I want to impress upon the importance of making sure that you have a list of things that will take you forward on a path of new adventures, a path of new, joyful, sparked, fun, inspiring adventures for as long as possible. And if you don't have a list like that, then start today creating one and do not worry about how you're going to make it happen. Leave that to the universe. But don't delay another day without telling the universe at least one thing you wish for, at least one thing. And then add to it. Because the universe is waiting to hear. I promise. And you can ask all those dream doers how it felt when they started living their dream, when they when it came into their reality and they experienced it. Because I can bet you that they'll say it was better than I even imagined. And that is what you want. So dream on. Thank you so much for tuning into the Living Your Spark Second Half podcast. If you'd like to watch my guest interviews, you can find the video version of this podcast on my Not Your Average Grandma YouTube channel. Also, you can check out what I have going on at the moment by going to my website at notyouraveragegrandma.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook at Not Your Average Grandma. If you like this episode, please mention it to a friend and don't forget to leave a review so I know the topics you like best and can bring you more of that content in upcoming episodes. Last but not least, remember to always listen to that inner voice that will never steer you wrong and make living from the most sparked place possible your biggest priority. When we do that, we make the world a better place.